Good afternoon. My name is Zachary Jewell and this is my final presentation on my intercultural experience. This week I attended an event in Chinatown, Los Angeles, California. This event was very informative and extremely profound on its knowledge of the ethnic minority groups that are in China. At this event they spoke about and displayed the different clothing, customs, artifacts, and beliefs of each minority group of China. The only funny thing about this event was that there was a Caucasian woman narrating the event in English, but she also knew how to speak in fluent Chinese. There were also Chinese men and women modeling the clothes that were worn by the different ethnic groups. I also got to see some of the artifacts such as the rattling drum which is used by the Han people during their Lunar New Year. I heard and learned about the different Chinese customs and I got to visualize the writing of the Chinese characters up close and personal. Even though the event had a lot of visual presentation that represented the ethnic groups, it still was a much more informative event than anything. This event was very educational, but the only part I found difficult to understand was the pronunciation and a spelling of a few Chinese words that were spoken. I always knew that China was a very highly populated country, but I never knew that there were also so many different ethnic minority groups in it. I learned at the event that there are 1.4 billion people that live in China. To give you an idea of how massive this country's population is, take one out of every five people that live in this world and this will give you the total sum of the people that live in China. 56 ethnic groups make up China's population as a whole. The few ethnic groups I will discuss here in this presentation are the Han Chinese, the Dai Chinese, the Manchu Chinese, the Mongolian Chinese, and the Uyghur Chinese. These ethnic minority groups represent the diversity of the land of China, but they also show the many different cultures that exist there. Even though these groups live in China, majority of them do not speak or write in traditional Chinese characters. In fact, most of them have their own spoken and written languages. Each ethnicity has created their own style of clothing. Their clothing is usually colorful and reflects each ethnicity's beliefs, legends, and superstitions of the people. The Han people. The Han Chinese people are very large in numbers. They are not only the largest ethnic minority group in China, but also of the world. Han Chinese have a population of 1.2 billion people and make up 18% of the world's population. This ethnic group has various dialects of Chinese and, and the Han spoken language is referred to as Han Yu, which means Han's language. Their written character is known as Han's. Their traditional clothing is made up of silk and is known as Han Fu. The men of old times wore a long loose fitting robe and the women wore a long gown. This traditional clothing and certain other clothing are worn for special occasions such as religious ceremonies, cultural events, coming of age ceremonies, funerals, and weddings. As China modernized, so did their fashion. Nowadays, the Han Chinese people have a more of a Western influence to their clothing. The men who are professionals wear mainly suits and the teenagers wear jeans and tennis shoes. In the Lunar New Year, the Han Chinese have many customs that usher in good luck for the New Year. The Han Chinese have many, have many customs and are very superstitious people and they love to wear their lucky colors of red and gold. 
The foo symbol is the symbol for good luck and it is posted for all to see. This symbol is often woven into their clothing. When the symbol is placed above the door of a house upside down, this symbol means that the family wishes for good luck to come into their home in the up and coming new year. The children at this time love to play with drums, which are known as the rattling drums. And these rattling drums represent happiness. And also at the time, at this time of the year, the children also are given money in red envelopes. These envelopes are given to the children for wishing them a good fortune for the up and coming new year. The Dai people. The Dai Chinese are another very interesting ethnic group in China. Their population is 1.5 million people, and in this region is where you would find the last known species of Asian elephants. The land of the Dai people is known for its good farmland. In this land, they grow exotic fruits such as pineapples, grapes, and rice. The main language spoken by the Dai people is called Dai Lu. Throughout the many generations, the Dai have managed to, to maintain their language. These people have a very strong belief in Buddhism, the water splashing festival, and the use of elephant drums. The water splashing festival is the most important festival to the Dai people because there is a legend that seven girls were terrorized by a devil. And they destroyed the devil, but in the process, they were set on fire. While they were burning, some villagers hurried to the girls and splashed water on them, saving their lives. So, in remembrance, the dye splashes water on themselves to chase away illness and any bad fortune for the up and coming new year. Among the dye people, the peacock dance is a well-known dance. The dance came from an ancestor that imitated the peacock's movement. The peacock symbolizes happiness in their culture. The way of the dye dress is very simple and practical. The men wear short sleeve shirt and long loose fitting pants and the women wear a short form fitting top with a slim skirt. The way that the dye dress is very useful for their farming and for their dancing. The Manchu people. Another ethnic group I learned about was the Manchu Chinese people. With a population of 10.6 million, this ethnic group originated from Northeast China, which is also known as the Manchuria region. These people benefit from their agriculture as well as industry work. In the south part of Manchuria, there is warm weather that produces barley, wheat, flax, and soybeans. In the north, they developed industries such as producing steel, automobiles, ships, aircrafts, and petroleum refining. The ancestors of the Manchu were tribesmen who formed a tribe to capture and rule China. After they conquered China, these Manchurians formed the Qing Dynasty. This was China's last dynasty which ruled China for 200 years. During this time, the Manchu outlawed the dress of all the Han Chinese people. They introduced a new style of clothing which was specific to the people of nobility and for the common men and women. The Chinese suit was reserved for the noble people and the government officials. These people wore a lavish silk jacket which closed by a row of vertical buttons. A long shirt was worn by the common men and a long dress was worn by the common women of their society. Their women usually grew their hair long and wore it in a bun and dressed it with jewelry. The married Manchu women would tie their hair in a ponytail braid it and secure it with a fan-shaped 
decorated hat with flowers and tassels. All the men were required back then to wear their hair long. This style called for them to shave their hair above the temples all the way back until the middle of their head and the remaining hair would be tied back into a tight braid. The Mongolian people. The Mongolian people have a long history of being nomads. Their houses, known as gurs or yurts, are made of canvases wrapped around wooden supports and are easily transportable. This ethnic group is located in northern China with a population of 5.8 million people. There are three dialects of their language that are spoken and the traditional Mongolian script is used for their writing. There is a fair that is celebrated in this culture which is called the Nadam and is celebrated once every year in Mongolia. The word Nadam means games. The people of Mongolia dress up and wear their best clothing to participate in the festivities of Nadam such as in archery, horse racing, and wrestling. The dress among the male and female Mongolians are very similar. Due to the cold climate, they often dress in many layers. Hats and boots are worn for warmth as well as for decoration. The undergarment is a long robe. Worn on top of the undergarment is a long sleeve garment or a short sleeve garment which is made to accommodate horseback riding. Horses are a very important part of the Mongolian culture. Both men and women of this culture are very accomplished equestrians. They love to ride horses. The Ugar people. The Ugar Chinese people are located in the western part of China and they have a population of 8.4 million people that live in this region. This region is flourishing with fruits and produce such as grapes, melons, pears, cotton, wheat, and walnuts. The Ugar people grow all of their harvest through extensive irrigation projects in their dry and arid land. This area also has deposits of minerals and oil. These products and others are sold and exported for the livelihood of the people in this area. The Ugar language belongs to the Turkic branch of Arabic. These people are known for their sheep kebabs and their bread which are cooked in an oven carved out of the ground. The Ugar people love to sing, dance, and perform. Their performances give their people hope for life after death and give them livelihood to their way of living. The way the Ugar people dress is very unique. The men wear either white or black colors. They like comfortable pants which with a long robe which is called a kai pan. The women wear more vibrant colors. They like to dress and wear long robes for dancing to create a visual flourish to their movements. A must have for every Ugar is a dopa. A dopa is a hand woven decorated hat. The Ugar believe that walking outside without a hat is thought to be an insult to the heavens. The dopa is a very important feature within the Ugar culture. Attending this event made me realize one thing I have learned in this class. We all are truly hardwired to belong to a tribe. These ethnic minority groups show us that it is natural for us all to gravitate towards certain tribal identities. No matter what ethnicity we are, we all identify, communicate, and express ourselves through our clothing, 
customs, culture, our language, and last but not least, through our religious beliefs. I thank you for taking the time to listen to my presentation on my intercultural experience. Once again, my name is Zachary Jewell. You have a good day. Bye-bye.